a good little chat uh, over at the Shaw Center, and we did uh, with the <laughs> Ottawa Board of Trade and 600 uh, of our closest friends. So th <laughs> thank you for for having me. By. Great. I have to tell you, I say it all the time. I every time I come to Ottawa, I have a great great time, and I just asking. Uh, the mayor, if he had an extra bed downstairs, I'll be back <laughs> next week, then the following week, and and a few other uh, times. So thank you for your hospitality. Thank you, Premier. And um, if if every time you come, we're we're going to make an announcement like today, I'll be I'll be really happy. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but um, I want to take a moment to thank you and to thank um, the people on your team, the people in the finance minister's office, and uh, all the staff. Uh, at the uh, province and all the team here at the City of Ottawa who worked on this agreement. Uh, people don't, you know, we, we get to announce this this morning, but there's a, there were a lot of people meeting often, uh, you know, several times a week in some cases uh, over the last couple of months to get this done. Um, so thank you to the hardworking teams on, uh, at the city and the province for delivering this so we could, we could make this announcement today. I see Robin over there. I signed, I signed a picture for her just the other day. She's getting a picture of her sitting at the chair. So that was good. She doesn't know that yet. Oh, she doesn't. That's going to be a surprise. Well, gonna, yeah, right. uh, but thank you to Minister Bethlen Falvey as well, who's been a great partner, and and um, and his team's been fantastic. So, and you know, this is a great day for our city, and not just because it's Goldie Gamari's birthday. Um, <laughs> but we're very happy with this announcement. So. We will now go to reporters' questions. Please identify yourself by name and outlet. Can all reporters please line up the, at the mic behind me? It'll be one question, one follow-up. First question. Great. <clears throat> Ian Bailey, Globe and Mail, a question for the Premier and then one for the Mayor. Uh, Premier, we don't see you uh, with other Premiers, uh, Conservative Premiers who are concerned about carbon pricing at the uh, appearing before any of the Commons committees. Um, is appearing in this manner something of interest to you? If not, can you tell us why not, why you're not in the lineup? Well, raising the cost on the backs of uh, everyone, not just here in Ontario, but across the, the country is very concerning. You know, no matter what, what poll you look at, it doesn't matter if it's a federal one, provincial, municipal, the number one issue is affordability for the people, affordable homes, affordable groceries, affordable fuel. Uh, we reduced uh, uh, the burden off the backs of people of 10.7 cents per liter. And I, I just don't understand why they're going to increase the carbon tax by 23 uh, percent. It hurts people. It, it hurts people uh, directly when they fill up, fill up their uh, cars, but it also hurts the delivery of food and groceries and goods. I, like, you have to give people a break, especially nowadays. Uh, it's, people are hurting right now. And with the interest rates uh, from the Bank of Canada, we need to... Uh, keep asking them, you have to reduce, uh, reduce the, the interest rates. Uh, if not, people are going to be in big, big trouble in a year or two years. When they renew it, it'll be thousands of dollars more every month, and people can't afford it. So let's go get those interest rates closer to 4% and instead of 5 They said, you know, the inflation, if it drops below 3% to 2.9, uh, we dropped to 2.9, then 2.8 did uh, look at lowering the interest rates. But what causes inflation, at least 30% of it, is high fuel cost. So we really, really have to focus on that and really focus on putting money back into people's pockets because it's uh, challenging uh, right now. So hopefully they won't do it. We'll, we'll see what happens. I wish my Premier friends all the very best. We have three, 13 great Premiers. Uh, we all get along extremely well. And uh, so I just want to wish uh, them all the best. As a follow-up, understood, but why not take the message you've just delivered to the Commons Committee? Well, you know, I'm out there in the media almost every day and uh, down in the legislature as well. Uh, they know how I feel. I've talked uh, personally, face-to-face, -face, just the Prime Minister and myself. I've, I've talked to Dominic LeBlanc about it. I've talked to their MPs, like on, almost on a daily uh, when I go to events, I, I, I'll work with anyone. I really will. But we all have to work together and and try to try to help the people now. It's it's very very difficult for for people. So let's all work together and see if we can reduce the the burden of of living and cost uh, uh, from from the people here in Ontario. 
but I do wish my uh, fellow Premiers all, all the very best. They'll have a loud voice. Hey, Premier, how are you doing? Max Good. Paris, CBC Hi, News. Uh, listen, I'm, uh, so the, the PM is calling on Premiers opposed to increasing the carbon tax uh, to come up with an alternative. Uh, what do you think of that proposal? Do you have an alternative? Well, yeah, we, we, we do. It's not uh, the extreme of one or extreme of the other. I, I believe you can be environmentally conscious, you can reduce emissions, uh, and create economic development. Now, let's just uh, just a few off the top. Uh, we had some pretty big emitters with Defasco and Algoma and, and Stalco, the big steel companies. You ever go uh, by Hamilton, you see all the smoke going up? Well. Uh, with the partnership with the federal government, we appreciate it. Uh, we both put hundreds of millions of dollars in to change uh, it over from coal-fired furnaces to electric arc furnaces uh, there at DeFasco and Algoma. I know Stelco's coming up with a plan. That's like taking two million cars off the road. Uh, we're building the largest uh, transit infrastructure, infrastructure in North America. Uh, that's getting people out of their cars into, into transit. And... Uh, Uh, on the EV sector, I don't know, Bloomberg uh, you know, headlines a couple of weeks were saying Canada, which is really Ontario, is the, the destination to invest in EV uh, production. We've seen over $28 billion in the auto sector, which is great here because they have a, a massive tech sector, an auto tech sector in, in Ottawa here up in Canada. Uh, so, you know, we, we're changing uh, people over from gas to electric uh, vehicles, and I predict uh, there's going to be investments of probably close to 30 billion. Uh, a big chunk of that 30 billion this year alone will be in the auto sector, the EV sector. Uh, so let's let's work together. That's that's all I'm asking. So there's other ways of reducing emissions other than digging into people's pockets and punishing companies. Um, the market dictates. These big companies, they listen to the consumer and they're doing everything they can to do their fair share. So that's that's my philosophy. And uh, have you brought up this philosophy with your other premiers who oh, one, agree with you? Well, 100%. Um, I've, I've talked to them again. I've, I've talked to you know ministers. I've talked to MPs. And there's just other alternatives. You, you, it makes us uncompetitive. Uh, worldwide when we're trying to attract companies to drive our economy and they they have this uh, burden on their backs we we can work with them and again reduce emissions and the other big thing I didn't even talk about which is massive uh, clean energy we're leading the world in clean energy it ranges anywhere from 90 percent clean energy maybe 94 depending you know if uh, when we're uh, refurbishing uh, Darlington and Pickering we announced and uh, Bruce Power, the largest nuclear facility in the world. We're building SMRs, small modular reactors. Um, but that's one of our selling features. When Vic Fidelli, our Minister of Economic Development, when we're attracting these companies, we're saying we have the cleanest grid in the world. So clean, green energy. So, I, you know, that's, that's the way to go. And that, that's huge, actually, massive. Bonjour, Monsieur Ford, Frédéric de Radio-Canada. Uh, did you go jogging with uh, Mr. Mayor this morning? Because I know he jogs every day. I'll tell you. I'd have to, I, I, I told the mayor, I'd have to strap a defibrillator on my back. I'd make it down to the corner, and then that would be it. It'd be game over. So we can follow him in the OPP car to make sure he's all right. But this, this guy's in shape like an Olympic athlete. So I got to... Uh, Maybe I'll ride a bike behind you or something. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so um, housing... The Federal yesterday announced um, a new renter's bill of rights. And it's seen for, in Quebec as an invasion of provincial jurisdiction. Uh, do, you, do you have the same view? Do you, do you, do you Absolutely. Shed some? Yeah, I, I, I agree. They, they, you know, we call it all the premier's jurisdictional creep. And uh, I know cities, when you, you ever do that to them, they lose their minds, rightfully so. And the province, you, you know how to catch the premier's attention uh, with the territories in the province? You start creeping into their jurisdiction, uh, everyone starts... Uh, losing their minds they, they really do so you know focus on their knitting focus on their responsibilities we'll focus on ours we'll support the uh, municipalities so i, I just 
I agree 100% with Premier Legault and all, all the Premiers, actually. Mr. Ford, on the announcement you made this morning, a lot of money for Ottawa. Yes. We don't see anything in there for OC Transpo, and they have, you know, they're a deficit. Uh, you know, ridership is down. So is there anything for OC Transpo in there? Well, we've put in $1.8 billion so, so far, and I think uh, talking about the federal government, you know, we need the ridership to come up to keep the economy going downtown and be able to pay for, for the, uh, you know, the LRT and that. But they, they have to get people back to work. You know, I understand maybe, you know, even like three days, anything. It sounds crazy. I'm begging people to go to work for three days. Not that they aren't working at home, but it really affects the, the downtown. And I'll pass this over to the mayor uh, to talk about. But we, we need them to, to bring people back to work. To go into the restaurants, go into the shops downtown, get on, get on uh, transit, and that's that's what we need. Do you want me to add to that? On anglais or on français? Uh, yeah, both. If you don't okay. Like, like. <laughs> uh, alors, um, nous avons beaucoup de défis uh, au, au sujet de, de le transport en commun, uh, mais no, nous continuerons à, à travailler ensemble avec nos partenaires uh, provincial et fédéral pour uh, pour um, répondre à, à les, les, uh, les concerns de les inquiétudes de, de le budget. Um, so, uh, you know, I think I think we need to have the federal government as our partner with the provincial government as part of a discussion about the future of public transit in Ottawa. We have a lot of big challenges, a lot of big financial challenges, and we, the three of us need to work together to resolve that. Hi, Premier Ford and Mayor Sutcliffe, Marco Bilyachi, iPolitics. Um, I know we're announcing, or I know we're here for an announcement for Ottawa, but, and I know that too doesn't necessarily make a trend, but this is the second uh, New Deal announcement with a major city in Ontario. Can we expect more announcements of this sort in other major cities like Hamilton, Brampton, and Mississauga? Well, right now, those two cities are very, very unique. Obviously, Ottawa has their, their challenges. They're the capital, uh, and Toronto's the largest city, the third largest between the U.S. and, and uh, Canada. So they have their challenges. But we, we pour money into these other cities and also pour them, everything from inf infrastructure to uh, other funding, a lot of money into other cities. I'll use Peel Region, for example. We're building a a massive, the largest hospital in Canada over there. Uh, we're, we're putting in transit uh, to a tune of a couple billion dollars throughout Peel and, and other regions. We're building uh, the Young Extension uh, going north and into York region. So we're, we're putting a lot of money into other regions uh, throughout Ontario, Windsor, southwestern on, Ontario region. Uh, they're getting a ton of money as well. Uh, Hamilton on the uh, other investments we're doing with them so I we're we're spending a, a lot of money supporting other regions right now and, and premier um, to follow up some of the, from some of the questions of my colleagues it seems like your government's become increasingly publicly critical of the federal government can you give us a sense of what that relationship is right now and kind of you know the source of a lot of your frustrations with them well the only only frustration uh, right right now is really uh, increasing the cost and the burden on the backs of people I have a, a really really good relationship with Christia Freeland she's a wonderful person I know uh, Minister of Finance uh, Peter Betham Volvi talks to her frequently as well I have a phenomenal relationship with Dominic LeBlanc and other MPs uh, again, I, I don't care about the political stripe. I care about the people, and uh, we we really uh, worked with them so well on so many investments uh, here in uh, like Nikia when we were here talking about the investment with Nikia or or in the EV sector or the electric arc furnaces uh, on healthcare on uh, throughout the pandemic. So we we've worked well together, but we. I guess we're going to differ on, on the carbon tax, and we know that. As I mentioned to the PM uh, a few years back, I said, uh, uh, Prime Minister, let's work on the things that we can agree on. There's certain things we won't agree on, we'll never agree on, but let's think of the positive things that we can work on. And it's been a, a very, very good relationship as far as I'm, I'm concerned. 
Good morning, Mr. Premier and Mr. Morning. Mayor. Uh, Sonia Koenig, CBC Hi, News, Sonia. Ottawa Local. Hi there. So, uh, Mr. Premier, news this morning uh, broke that some major school boards in the province, including the Ottawa Carlton District School Board, school boards in Toronto, they're suing some social media giants, um, Meta, TikTok, Snapchat. The claim is that they are disrupting learning in the classroom. This is becoming increasingly difficult for teachers. I'm wondering if we could just get some reaction from you on that move. Sure, we, we ban cell phones in the, in the classroom, so I don't know what the kids are, are using, uh, but I, I disagree with them. They, let's focus on the core values of education. Let's focus on uh, math and reading and writing. Uh, that's what we need to do, put all the resources into the kids. Um, and I don't know, what are they spending on lawyer fees to go after these massive companies that have endless cash? to uh, fight this. So let's focus on the kids, not about this other uh, nonsense that they're, they're looking to fight in, in court. And I can't say much because it's in front of the courts right now, but that's my opinion. Okay, very good. Second question, Highway 174. Yeah. Uh, just some clarification on that, if I could. Uh, press release says, phased plan to guide the upload over the next three years. Does this mean that that highway will eventually become like a provincially run highway, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it will. There'll be okay. immediate uh, funding of $9 million. I know our great team, our staff are working on everything else. And again, I got to give a shout out to uh, the mayor's office and, and the finance minister's office, my office. Everyone worked so hard on, uh, on this deal and it's a really good deal for, for everyone. So yes, we'll, we'll take that responsibility and uh, Barnsdale uh, Interchange, 401 Barnsdale Interchange. I gotta give uh, Lisa McLeod, man, is she a champion. She has been on to every min MTO or mi Minister of Transportation and uh, she took uh, Big Prab to the floor the other day and she got the, <laughs> you got the money. Yeah. <laughs> but no, she, she does an incredible job and so does Goldie here. So we have two uh, great representatives. So that, that's going to be a game changer. Uh, good morning, Mr. Premier. Uh, Blair Crofter from the Ottawa Citizen. Um, a former Ottawa City Councillor who's now an MPP has twice brought a, a private member's bill to increase the ability of councils to discipline or remove wayward councillors. And that's twice been defeated by the government. I'm just wondering if you have plans to bring in your own legislation to, to beef up uh, those regulations? Well, every city has their integrity commissioner, right? And they, they have the, the powers to uh, do what they need to do if someone misbehaves, if you want to call it that. So they have their integrity commissioner and, and council and mayor. They can make their, their decisions. But, but there's no power to remove a councillor. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, um, again, uh, the Integrity Commissioner and Council uh, can, can work that out. But ultimately, do you know who can remove someone? Are the people. Uh, that's why we, we have elections every four years. Uh, the people either like you or they don't like you. If they like you, you get a, another chance at it. And if they don't like you, well, you're sitting on the bench somewhere. But uh, it's the people that are going to decide. Okay, and uh, a second question. Twice today you've, uh, or several times today, you've said how much you appreciate being in Ottawa. Yes. But you've only been here, I think, three times since you've been Premier, correct me if I'm wrong, and you weren't here during the Duresho no. or during the convoy. So. That number's wrong, way okay. wrong. I'll get the number. I've been here a lot more than oh, three okay. times. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm just... Yeah, uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to be here next week. I'm coming the following week, and, uh, yeah, I've, I've been here endless times, yeah. Uh, but can you okay. Bonjour, Charles Antoine Gagnon avec le droit. Question pour la 174. Pourquoi euh, laisser la province ou donner à la province la gestion de, de la route? Um, tout d'abord, c'était uh, une, une route provinciale originalement et c'était passé à la, à la ville d'Ottawa il y a peut-être 20 ans, 25 ans. Um, alors, c'est le temps de... C est, c est une, c est, uh, uh, nous avons beaucoup de dépenses parce que c'est une, une route uh, municipale. Uh, alors, si le, le gouvernement... Et 
c'est comme, je sais que pour tous les euh, motoristes, euh, euh, c'est comme une, une route provinciale. C'est comme le 417. C'est la même chose. Euh, alors, personne ne comprend pourquoi c'est une, une route municipale. Euh, alors, euh, c'est le temps euh, de, 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 euh, de faire un, un changement. Et euh, pour les, les, les années suivantes, euh, le, la ville d'Ottawa n'aura pas les, euh, les, euh, les coûts de, de maintenir euh, cette, cette route. Alors, ça, ça relève un peu le, une, une, euh, euh, notre budget. Pour le poste de police au centre Rideau, combien d'argent la province euh, va remettre à la ville dessus? Si vous n'avez pas le montant, peut-être demander à votre, à oui. votre ami. Alors, il y a un montant pour la, la sécurité publique. Il y a un montant pour euh, quelques, quelques initiatives. Et euh, ça, c'est le... Uh, le début de, de notre conversation, alors nous, nous, uh, nous continuerons à, à parler uh, spécifiquement où uh, cet argent uh, doit être uh, dépensé. Alors, on ne sait pas encore. Good morning, Premier. Natalie Van Roy with CTV News Ottawa. Why are you asking the Prime Minister to call on federal workers to return to the office full time? Well, that's pretty simple. You've you got to get the economy going downtown. These, these uh, restaurants are hurting, the shops are hurting, uh, ridership on the transit's hurting. Uh, I, I think that's a normal request. You get hired, come to work. Like, imagine if I told everyone else in the province, you don't have to go to work, our economy would be shot. So uh, they, don't, they shouldn't get special treatment, even a few days a, a, a week, anything to get the economy going and ridership going if you don't have people you know hopping on the transit uh well it really defeats the purpose of investing uh, more into the transit we've sunk 1.8 billion dollars into transit so far so it's, i think it's a, a pretty simple request and to clarify as part of this new funding announcement it is all new money correct that's correct that's not including the hundreds of millions of dollars that we've invested over the the uh, number of years, uh, transit, um, uh, roads, highways, and bridges, uh, about 425 million dollars. We're building new schools. Uh, I know in Goldie's riding, we're building schools, and Lisa's riding, we're building schools as well, building long term care uh, homes as well, up in Nepean, 192 of them. Um, but we're going to continue to build. We're putting the largest and that second largest. It's almost equal to uh, Trillium's investment, so it's right up there, second largest in the country, uh, in excess of well over probably $10 billion, uh, building a brand new hospital, uh, CHEO 2, uh, investing in pediatric care, announcement this year over $40 million. I could keep listing it going on and on and on. Uh, so we're, we're going to continue investing in all our cities, including the second largest city in, in Ontario. Bonjour à vous deux, Philippe Bessette, journaliste pour TVA. Ma question est pour le maire. Ça fait combien de temps que vous demandez, justement, de l'argent supplémentaire pour la 174 et pour les autres euh, trucs du, euh, du communiqué de presse? Alors, euh, je ne sais pas que, euh, exactement quand nos discussions ont commencé, mais euh, ça fait deux, deux ou trois mois euh, au moins euh, que nos équipes euh, sont, sont euh, en, en discussion pour euh, arriver à cette, euh, à cette entente. Alors, euh, euh, l'équipe ici à l'hôtel de ville, l'équipe à la province ont travaillé très fort, travaillé, travaillé ensemble. Pour, euh, pour arriver à ce moment, pour, euh, pour cette annonce aujourd'hui. C'est beaucoup de travail euh, pour déterminer, euh, pour comprendre nos priorités, euh, les priorités que, que nous partageons, euh, et de décider euh, euh, les montants euh, pour euh, chaque enjeu. My next question is for both of you. Uh, do you have any reaction about the uh, legal action taken by the uh School board uh, for School Board of Ontario uh, against uh, Meta? Well, I'll answer the same way as I did. Let's focus on the kids. Let's focus on education. 
Uh, that's what we need to focus on, not uh, the social media. We banned uh, cell phones back in 2019, so I'm not too sure uh, how they're, they're on social media when we banned them in, in the classroom, which was uh, the right thing to do. I've got, I've got enough to worry about as the mayor of Ottawa. It's not my, uh, not my job to comment on what the school board does. Hi, Premier. Uh, Darcy de Tony, City News, um, asking this on behalf of a colleague uh, in Toronto. Uh, serious criminal cases being thrown out due to del delays and backlogs in the Ontario uh, county system. Uh, this appears to be impacting the safety of victims. What is the government doing to uh, fix this problem? Well, I know the Attorney General is working diligently on making sure that uh, there's more resources there. We're hiring more judges. I think uh, 25 or 26 judges to help any backlog, but let's go to root cause. Let's, let's uh, catch these criminals and, and, and throw them away, especially the car thefts that we're, we're, we're seeing are, are terrible. These, they're kicking in doors and putting guns to people's heads. So, uh, but I, I hear you and we're investing into the courts in a, in a big way. This will be the last question. Have that honor. Um, what can be done now to make sure the people accused of the uh, violent crimes uh, don't get their charges dropped due to this uh, due to this issue? Well, we have to make sure that we have enough uh, time in the courts. We have enough judges, and and we're doing that. Um, and let, let's be fair to the court system too. Uh, you know, if you look three, four years ago, we didn't have the car thefts that we have now, especially in uh, Toronto and the GTA area. It's staggering, and why is it staggering? A couple things. Uh, we have to tighten up the Montreal uh, ports, that they're going in there, they're getting shipped out on containers. We need to support, the federal government needs to support the CBSA officers. Uh, they're checking everything coming in, rightfully so. They aren't checking anything going out. I, I think they have limited, very limited uh, resources. And again, I, I've been you know, saying constantly, you can't let these criminals, these violent criminals, out on bail. Um, not, not just once, three, four, five times. And, you know, they mock our police. They've, I've heard it firsthand from our police officers. They get arrested. They're in the back seat, and they said, I will be out uh, by the time you get to work again tomorrow. And guess what? They're out by the time they get back to, to work. We have to uh, lock these criminals up. And it's, they're terrorizing neighborhoods and families. You know, they're kicking doors and very violent. I, I've seen videos. They've tried to run over our police officers on numerous occasions. Uh, these are terrible, terrible people. They need to be thrown in jail. And I know some people, I, I've heard uh, they're coming from everywhere, but uh, groups would come up from South America, stay for two weeks. They have their list of what they have to do, uh, break and enters or stealing cars and then they go back so we're pouring money into uh, police we're buying helicopters uh, to track these uh, criminals down but enough's enough we live uh, law and order here in Ontario and we're gonna throw every resource at you and for the criminals that may be listening uh, we're coming for you and we're gonna get you and we're gonna throw you in jail so um, enough's enough but, Thank uh, you, everyone. Well, first of all, I want to give Stefan uh, Sarazan a shout out because he does an incredible job, represents a francophone community, and he's, he's one of our true leaders as well. I know I mentioned all our other uh, members, but uh, Stefan, you're, you're a champion. Thank you. Okay, thanks, okay. everyone. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Merci beaucoup. Thanks again, Mayor. Appreciate it.